Welcome back to the Circuito to Estoril here in Portugal. If you've not been with us for the remainder of this morning, then where have you been? We've had four absolute belters to kick off the Repsol CEV Championship. Two European Talent Cup races, both of them been won by no more than a tenth of a second. A Junior World Championship race that went right down to the last lap and a dramatic Moto2 race that saw our leader crash out with more than two or three laps remaining. The action on track has been ever so slightly quicker than that. Of course, the common snail. The common snail, yes. I think I just about could have identified that one myself, but... And you are no David Attenborough. I am no David well. Attenborough. It has to, be, has to be said if you've not noticed already. Jack Appleyard and Elliot York in the box with you in case you did miss Moto2 race one. Here are the highlights. was how the action unfolded earlier on today with Nicky Tooley picking up the win. He'll start this race number two from second on the grid in behind Edgar Pons. The Estoril circuit, 4.2 kilometers in length. Four left-handers, nine right-handers, and possibly the more important thing is the fact that it's a little bit drier now than it was three hours ago when that race one got underway. As you can see there, track temperature now up to 18 degrees. It has been languishing around the 13, 14 degree mark. So ambient temperature up to 16 as well means that we're suddenly just starting to get a little bit of heat here in Portugal. We are. It's starting to feel like we're actually in Portugal and not in the north of England, thankfully. So yeah, clouds still appearing around the Circuito do Estoril. But as we said, the track is drying, so it's going to be interesting to see what tyres these Moto2 riders choose. Not sure what I'd be going with right now, Joe, but not sure about you. Uh, well, we were just saying that a minute ago. It is going to be a bit of a lottery here, I would imagine. And you can see there's a lot of riders, including Hector Pons, who's on pole position. He's done his sighting lap. He's come back into his grid slot and the mechanics are almost immediately working on that bike. I would imagine he's gone out with a wet on the back, and now we're going to see a slick rear being put into the back of that AGR Calex. There's going to be a lot of work going on on the grid. That, incidentally, as we said, is Edgar Pons. He's your pole position man. Second place in our opening race in the European Moto2 Championship earlier on today. Here's the race winner, Nicky Tooley. Not as much work going on on our current championship leader. Full gas for Nicky Tooley there. 
hoping to repeat his race one where he picked up, like we say, that victory in slightly wetter conditions than we have right now. It's still not a pleasant it isn't spring at all afternoon, though, pleasant, is it? No. By any stretch of the imagination, there's still quite a few coats being worn. Here is the number 27 of Kazma Daniel Kazmiedin. He was having a superb ride in his debut out in an European Moto2 Championship, only to crash out of fourth place. But at just 18 years of age, we're hoping to go one better and at least pick up some points in this race number two. Apart the Dynavolt intact Sepang International Circuit junior team. What a mouthful that is. <laughs> Good to see the fans still here as well, despite the rain. We can see Dunlop at the front there. They're going to have a fairly busy and I would probably say quite nervous five or ten minutes here. Here's Jerry Salim, part of the junior talent team. He's moved up onto the Moto2 machine after a couple of years on a Moto3. And a, again, a good ride in the opening parts of race number one before eventually crashing out. Yeah, he looked good. Uh, before his crash on his debut Moto2 ride, did Jerry Salim. So, yeah, he'll be hoping for another good start and a, a better outcome, let's say, for race two as he starts from fourth. Here is Tomasco Mark on the Italian team Chiatti Speed Up, the 18 year old. Estoril 2018, race one of his 11th, and race two, ninth. So, he's got top 10 pedigree for sure he was ninth in race one seven points so i'm sure he'll be hoping to go slightly better from the middle of the second row of the grid you can see on his helmet there he still had winter testing on it so i'm not sure because the conditions are that poor he's continued on with his uh, visor which is probably more appropriate for these sort of conditions than for anything that will be reflective of any sorts with the sunlight shining down here's hector garzo nightmare start to the season for him he's possibly one of the championship favorites he's certainly going to be one of the protagonists you would imagine as we go through the season third last year in the european moto 2 but he didn't make it past turn two on lap one in the first outing for these guys yeah disappointed to start for hector garzo like you say crashing out at turn two yeah he'll be obviously looking for a better result uh, from sixth place on the grid the spanish rider as we look at Yari Montella. The man of the moment. The man of the moment indeed, or he was the man of the moment until a certain Jack cursed him with a couple of laps remaining. He's had three hours to recompose himself and put the disappointment of race one behind him. If he did miss it, he was in front and on course for picking up not only his first win in this category, but the speed up first ever victory in the what now nine years that Moto2 have been participating in the Repsol CV. A speed up bike has never won a race. He was two or three laps away from doing it before crashing out of the lead. Alessandro Zaccone fifth in race one, a good ride from him from eighth on the grid, the 20 year old, born in Rimini, like we said in the first race, birthplace of riders like Enea Bastianini, Marco Bezzecchi, and Stefano Manzi. So, a good crop of riders, you say, coming from that area of Italy. Well, I wish I could have some sort of an explanation to why Mikel Pons has brought three or four cuddly toys onto the grid with him. <laughs> Sadly, I don't. Fourth in the opening race of the season. Looks like he had, who did he have there? Finding Nemo, amongst others. Can't beat a bit of Finding Nemo, Jack. I don't think he'll be strapping them on and sort of having them as pillion for the race. No, that, that would be a first, I think. But it clearly worked for him in race one, fourth. Good result for Mikel. It didn't work for this man, though. Teammate to Edgar Pons, sat on pole position. This is Benny Solis, the American. Crashed out of fifth place in the opening race about three hours ago. He's OK, though, which is good news because he has uh, had to go through quite a, an arduous process with spine surgery over the winter. It plagued him throughout the whole of 2018, where he was very rarely 100% fit. But hopefully that has put everything to right. Here's Adam Noridin. Yeah, the Malaysian rider, eighth in race 
one. Did that say eighth? It did, didn't it? It did, yeah. Good ride eighth from him on his one. debut outing. You can hear the whistles going in the background with the marshals motoring up and down the grid. I would imagine that would be because once the three-minute board goes up, there can be no further tyre changes or any work on the bike whatsoever. So he'll be keeping a close eye on everybody on the grid just to make sure that there's no last-minute changes, nobody throwing in a slick rear tyre with the three-minute board already having gone up. Yeah, and here is the number 32 of Ramadan Rosley, the Malaysian rider on the 1XOX TKKR SAG Team Kalex. Debut podium for him last time Absolutely, out. yeah, great, great result from 12th on the grid. But yeah, like you say for tyres, it'll be interesting to see what everyone's chosen. Can't quite see at the minute. Well, everybody's still got tyre warmers on, so we'll have to wait for the warmers to come off for us to have a good look. Do you know what? In these conditions, we've, what have we got ahead of us? 18 laps. It doesn't look like we're going to get any further rainfall. The race will have been declared as a dry race as well, which means that if we do get an in inclement no, weather the over the course of the Release 18 laps, we will get... Okay. No. I'm just listening in here. What yeah, fascinating conversation. Kevin Kubo basically being told how to start. <laughs> so you see that thing there? That's the clutch. You pull, release it. You pull that thing in. <laughs> when the lights go out up there, release it and go. Thank I mean, you, it, it, it's solid, solid advice, it is, to be fair. It is. Right, so here's your starting grid for the second Moto2 European Championship race. Edgar Pons on pole once again. Uh, Nicky Tooley's there in second, your race winner from earlier today. And Kazma Daniel bin Kazmiadin. As we go further down the grid, you'll find the likes of Hector Garzo. You'll also find the man who was in contention last time out, Yari Montella, onto row four. Solis, Noradin, and... Didn't quite catch that on row four, but... Looked like it's Ramdan Rosley on row number four. Kevin Kubo, Matthias Magel, Matteo Ferrari there on row number five. We've also got Chandler Cooper, Leon August and Leon Tangre back there on row number six. As you make your way through, we've got Danny Valle, Peter Piverleiden, Sam Wilford all in contention as well. But that is the man that everybody... Is that slick? I can see... It is slick on the front for Edgar Pons. That is a slick front on... Mark on, is that? No, that'll no, be Jerry Salim. Salim yeah. I think that is slicks across the board. So, unsurprisingly, we've a dry line now formed and we've not had any rain for the past two or three years. Yep, slick front and rear for the race one winner, Nicky Tooley as well. Nobody is gambling, well, on a wet tyre because if the rain starts to fall, we'll see a red flag. So, my guess would be everybody will be having slick front, slick rear, and with the track as is, no surprise. No surprise at all, yeah, as we get underway for the warm-up lap. It looks like every rider is on slicks, like we've just explained. So, first dry race, I say dry in inverted commas, um, of the day, which is good to see. So you look, oh, and you run into turn one. Yeah, they've there. got to be super careful. There's it's like we saw last patches. season with Javi Carlos coming into turn one, losing the front early doors and sliding out of the race. So, yeah, it's going to be a sketchy first lap or two, let's put it that way. It will be. Those that hit the front nice and early will be the most confident because it's not going to be the easiest of places to pass here. We're just looking offline at the moment just to see, and there are still some wet patches about. Yeah, you don't want to be running too far off line. As I say, wet track and slick tyres do not mix. So it looks looks like there's sort of one-way slime around the track at the minute, but hopefully it will dry up for the riders as the race goes on. Hopefully there's possibly just enough room for people to be able if to If they're feeling through. brave enough, for sure, yeah. You can see on the running to turn six here, this is one of the, the most important, the most easy places, if you can put that in inverted commas, <laughs> to pass on the Estoril circuit. Yeah, and that's looking, that's looking quite dry across the board there, so I think I think the uh, track in different areas of the circuit is sketchier than others. Certainly into the back part of the circuit, I think is possibly where it's at its dampest. We see them go through turn seven there, that's Benny Solis, the teammate of Edgar Pons. He's going to make his way through from row number four of the grid. Yeah, that does look sketchy through there, that's Turns 9 and 10, Gancho. You can hear the, the risping roar of the Honda engines. We've, after two races, become so accustomed 
to the grunt and the groan of the triumphs, but we're back to the 2018 spec and beyond in the European Moto2 class. Everybody running the Honda engine, the 600 CBR 600, rather than the 765 of the triumph that the World Championship in Moto2 level has now made the switch across to. Here he is then, Edgar Pons, lining up a pole once more. Can he go one better than he did in the first race and claim victory? We will wait and find out. Second place in race number one. He's on pole position for the fifth race in a row. The Moto2 champion back in 2015 can only manage runner-up to Jesko Raffin last year after two years away on the world circuit. Is this the time he stamps his authority on this championship? Interesting to see Pons isn't quite in his grid slot, a little bit further back. We wait for the lights to come on. They'll eventually go out as they do now. Great start from Nicky Tooley in second place, but Pons has possibly got the jump from pole position once more. Bit of a wheelie on the rundown, but it's going to be Daniel Kazmiudin who takes the whole shot. And the Malaysian will lead a European Moto2 race for the first time. Yeah, easy does it into turn one for all the riders there in the midfield, but it looks like everyone's come through clean enough. Kazmir Din runs wide, it allows Tuli to retake the lead. Oh, and the Finn isn't hanging about here, he's hit the front and already he's trying to pull clear. Pons can see that, so he quickly dives his way past Kazmir Din, as does Hector Garzo as well. He's got round further than he did in the first race. Who's, Who's that that's gone wide? Possibly didn't catch the number, but they're well out of contention. They're taking the car park route, possibly an elbow involved or an knee as they were punted wide. Meanwhile, at the front, Nicky Tooley leads and already starting to pull clear from Edgar Pons and Hector Garzo in second and third. Yeah, Tooley, great start for the for the finish rider. Race one winner, seven tenths clear at the minute, up to 1.2 after two sectors. So, yeah, the Finn is really bolting at the start of this race with Pons, Garzo and Kazmaiudin chasing, but it's Pons and Garzo who are breaking clear from the fourth place man. It's Kazmi Adin who's just going to get swamped here. Zaccone is under the inside now. I'm not sure if we zoom in. Has Kazmi Adin possibly got a wet rear rod? It'd be interesting to see if we could get a close-up of the number 27 because he is dropping like a stone because now slipping up to the inside of him was that our race leader from earlier on today. It was Good start once again from Yari Monte, and now he's up into fifth place ahead of Kazmir Din, but the Malaysian, having taken the whole shot, is dropping backwards at a real rate of knots. He is, and I think it was Montella's teammate, uh, Mark On, who ran wide at turn three there, so Mark On dropping from a good qualifying position down into 19, so disappointment for the Italian. But it's Thule, a 1.2 second lead. Let's see what it is over the line. Has he stretched his advantage further? Certainly has, has to have done. Oh, yes. 2.4 seconds, Nicky Tooley has pulled the pin at the start of this race. He's not messing about, he's not waiting for anybody else to try and have any battle in this one. He's got 18 laps and already he's trying to break clear. Edgar Pons and Hector Garzo in second and third have got themselves a bit of a challenge on now. Meanwhile, Yari Montea, the man who probably should have won the opening race of the day, Oh, big moment for Garzo on the run in towards turn number three. Just about gets it stopped. I was going to say Monte is up to fourth now and closing in on that battle for second. Yeah, Pons just holding off Garzo for second as the, the duo scrap it out. But yeah, look at this. It's Thule stretching his advantage at the front. Is anyone going to be able to catch him? We'll wait and find out. But here we go. Through the kink on the back straight into turn six. Will Garzo have a look at the inside? I don't think he will this lap. Oh, he looks so good into turn four there. Did Hector uh, Nicky Tooley out from backing in that Stylo bike? Kalex, he's got style on the side and he's certainly living up to the name as well. Really is. Brilliant from the Finnish rider. Possibly a couple Ooh. of errors there. It, is, it leaves an opportunity for Zaccone to slip under his compatriot Montea, but Montea holds on to fourth place to make the way through turn number eight and now they'll make the way into the chicane of Gancho, turns nine and ten left and then right and then into the super technical final sector that battle for second and third is going to heat up as we get going it is but i think for the time being i think they've got to stick behind ponds if he's got the pace to try and not battle each other and catch up to Thule if it's possible because 2.8 it could be over three seconds by the time they go over the line let's have a look here we go, across the line, lap record held by Ricky Cardus of a 142.064. They come across the line, the fastest man on track is Yari Montea, the number 55 in the background there, with a 146.9. So they're still quite a way off. 
what the superior race pace around here is. Unsurprising, we've still a couple of wet patches floating about. Meanwhile, Zaccone is the man on the move. He's through into third place under the inside of Hector Garzo and has a big look up the inside of Edgar Pons, but no way through there. But well, suddenly, Alessandro Zaccone is the man on the move at the moment. He absolutely is, and here we see Yari Montella, the race leader for so long in race one, crashed at that corner just there on the exit where he's just gone by, latching on to this battle for second. Fastest lap of the race as well, so he is on it in this early stages. But look at the gaps to Thule, they've got, got some time to make up. It's already nearly three seconds, and Thule isn't slowing up as well. He was the quickest man through sector one, the quickest man through sector two. Momentarily, put your bottom dollar on the fact he's probably going to be the quickest man through sector three as well, as Zaccone dives through into second place. The 20 year old Italian, a best finish in Moto 2 last year, a debut year for him in the category of fourth place. He's looking for that first ever podium, but he's not messing about. Has he got the pace to possibly reel in two lead, mate? He looks like he could do, because he's eking out a gap on Pons and the, the other two behind him he did. He immediately. Made, he's made light work of making his way past Garzo and then Pons, and instantly he's already yeah, put this. four, five bike lengths into Edgar Pons in third place. This could be the fastest sector four if our eyes don't deceive us, I reckon, as he tries to close down Nicky Tooley. Tooley comes across the line, 145.4, 2.8 seconds clear of Zaccone in second. So this will be the lap where it will become interesting as Garzo now dives under the inside of his compatriot, Edgar Pons. But as I was saying, this is going to be an interesting lap now for Alessandro Zaccone. The gap is 2.8. How much can he bring it down? Does he have the pace to be able to reel in Nicky Tooley? Yeah, he's lost a tenth in the first sector, yeah, 2.8 down. But yeah, like you say, this will be the lap. He's got some clean air. Let's see if he can bridge that gap. Tooley running slightly wide on turn four, brings it back to the apex as he drives down now into the kink, ready for turn six. As Zaccone with Garzo chasing him, Pons and Montella just stretching out a bit now, the, the gap for second, third, and fourth and fifth. He's certainly pushing is the number 61 of Alessandro Zaccone aboard the promo racing Calex. We've got a Calex leading, a Calex in second, whereas Hector Garzo is on board the Tech 2 Moto 3 machine. Never really went that well, certainly in recent years in the World Championship. No. Despite a number of good riders being on it as well. No, it's, I think it's fair to say it's not the favourable machine in the Moto 2 class, but nevertheless, Garzo's riding the wheels off it. And let's have a look at the gap. Zaccone, four tenths quicker in sector three and two tenths quicker in sector two. So he's closing that gap and he's little bringing, by little. He's bringing Garzo with him as well. Yeah, he is. Hector Garzo has managed to tuck right into the back of Alessandro Zaccone. The man that's getting tailed off is Edgar Pons. Started from pole position, but he hasn't got the pace to be able to go with the leaders. Gary Monte is the next man to possibly fall into the clutches. Fastest lap for Garzo, taking it off Zaccone. Three tenths quicker was Garzo than Zaccone and Thule in front of him. Gap down to 1.9 out the front. It was 2.8, 2.9. It's now 1.9. They've pulled back a whole second on the race leader. So Zaccone and Garzo certainly have the pace to make this race a little bit more interesting than we were, what we thought it might be. As Zaccone runs wide, opportunity for Garzo to slip under the inside at turn three. And he takes it as well. Good work from Garzo. He's got form in this championship. Third last year with four podiums, including a win at Albacete. Can he smell a race win number two here in Estoril? I think he can. He, he smells it and he wants to make up for his mistake in race one, two, when he crashed out of the second corner. Back in it in. Nice. But turn six, holding the line, though. Cut in the apex. And, yeah, he's on another quick lap. A tenth under in the second sector and three tenths under in sector one so yeah Garzo is on it but these two are coming as a pair there's no doubt about that Zaccone made a mistake ran wide allowed Garzo to dive under the inside of him but he's quickly settled back into third place and these two are closing in at a rapid rate of knots on two the out front it was 1.8 seconds last time around as they come through the final sector now turns 12 before they then flick right into turn 13 I'll tell you once they come across the line what the gap is yeah, tyres tyres getting warmed up. Sorry, Jack. Tyres getting warmed up now as well. So the riders are really pushing, and I reckon we'll see a, 
quickest lap of the race. The gap is visibly smaller as they come across the line. Was 1.8 seconds. Thule, your race leader, comes across the line. Then Garzo, just a second back. Fastest lap of the race to the number four, a 143.318. They're within, what, a second and a half of the fastest ever lap we've seen in a Moto2 machine around here from July of 2017. Yeah, Garzo, 1.2 quicker than Thule on that lap. So, yeah, reeling them in at a rapid rate of knots like we've just mentioned. Certainly are, and... To be quite frank, this piece of paper I've got in front of me where I've been noting the gaps down, I'm going to have to pick up and throw out the window in a minute. <laughs> Pretty much at the end of this lap because Garzo is there now, as is Zaccone as well. It was Thule out front by himself, but I think we can safely say that we've now got three riders in a battle for the lead. Yeah, we absolutely have, and Ponzi is just, just over a second. No, oh. sorry. I was going to say, slight little bobble on the entry into turn six is that from Hector Garzo, and he's just lost a little bit of ground on Thule out front. An opportunity now for Zaccone to dive back underneath him, but he does well, he recovers well, does Garzo, keeps hold of second place. Yeah, here we go now. They're going to have a sniff into the left and the right here. I don't think they're close enough this lap, but yeah, like you say, certainly a trio of riders battling for the race win now, and I think it's only a matter of time before Garzo and maybe Zaccone too get get ahead of Thule. Just 20 years of age, Hector Garzo, as is Zaccone as well, whereas the pretty much ancient Nicky Thule at 23, still a, a young bunch out front, and that is a proper nine-wheeler now for the lead. Look at them. That's the first time we've had an opportunity to see them out of turn 13, spinning the rear wheel up, and here comes Garzo. The tech three of the Spaniard was in the front for the slightest of seconds. Now an opportunity for dive underneath on the brakes. Here comes Zaccone as well, and Zaccone is going to move from third into first. Does he run wide? No, he doesn't. Alessandro Zaccone hits the front. What a move from the Italian. And here comes Garzo as well. Thought just for a second he was going to just lunge up the inside of Nicky Tooley with the fastest lap of the race. This time Garzo made makes his move up the inside of Thule and now the two men that have closed him in have passed him within the space of three corners what can Thule do within a response now because he looked fairly comfortable out front these two have caught them and passed him with ease can Thule hang on to them or are these two just going to pull clear yeah this will be interesting now two for the price of one for Zaccone on turn one and Garzo slipping under Thule at turn three so yeah let's let's see what Thule can do now when he's following these two riders who are who were quicker than him, uh, another second again on that lap. So, Thule seems to be struggling with this pace. Let's see if he can stick by them, but Zaccone already aching out that gap at the front. Here's Alessandro Zaccone looking for a debut podium, which would obviously make it a debut win. Hector Garzo has had plenty of opportunities to step onto the podium in this championship. He won in Albacete last year as well, and Nicky Thule was obviously the race winner last time out. Looking at the fin, I think he's getting dropped here. Yeah, the yeah. pace of the leading two is just too much for him. He's trying his best to stay with them, but he's already making a couple of mistakes, running ever so slightly wide. He's on the absolute limit, is Nicky Thule, just to stay where he is. And already these two are gone. Yeah, Thule's got a 2.9 second gap to Pond, so that's a nice buffer. So for Thule, a win in a third place wouldn't be too bad. Well, it would be very good for the start of the championship. But here comes Garzo past Zaccone on the straight. Can he get into turn one ahead? Yes, he can, I think. Zaccone just on the brakes. No, Garzo's going to hold it. And now Hector Garzo's opportunity to lead this one. We're on to lap number seven of an 18-lapper here in Estoril. Zaccone was the fastest man. A lap previous with a 142.836, eight hundredths of a second shy of that fastest ever lap. But a couple of them just making ever so slight mistakes there. It's allowed Thule just to stay in contention. Yeah, he's not, he's not out of it just yet. We can't, of course, rule him out at this moment in time. Gaza looks super quick as they flick right through turn number five in towards turn six here, the Parabolica interior. Letting the rear of that Tech 3, spitting from left to right. He does look good on the bike, does a number four. Ooh, Zaccone. They're both super aggressive on the bike. Really are, really, really pushing with 11 laps to go. And I think that is one thing that we need to keep an eye on, the fact that there is still 11 laps to go. It's the first race in dry conditions. These tyres are going to take a bit of a pounding. They are indeed, yeah, with the, the rate of knots these, are, these two are going at as well. That could come into effect. I mean, we're almost discounting Yari Montea and Edgar Pons in fourth and fifth at the moment. But 
they could possibly just be playing a waiting game and waiting for the tyres to come to them. We'll have to wait and see. Still a long way to go, but at the moment it's Gaza and Zaccone out front. Super impressive. That is the CNS Motorsport Tech 3 garage that Hector Gaza rides out of. And here comes Zaccone down the start finish straight. We've seen them swap places three laps in a row, but this time Gaza is able to hold on into turn one. Yeah, Thule three tenths slower than the duo in front of him on that lap so just losing touch at the moment is Nicky Tooley race one winner as Hector Garzo and Zaccone continue for, to fight at the front in a blistering pace fastest lap of the race goes to your race leader Garzo on that last lap 42.7 fractionally quicker than Zaccone as the two lock horns in this Moto2 race with 10 laps to go like you say it'll be interesting to see if the tyres hold up and if Nicky Tooley can play that waiting game or if uh, Pons and Montella can play that waiting game, but who knows? Oh, oh. big moment for Hector Garzo and for oh. Nicky Tooley as well. The pair of them run on. Tooley into the gravel trap. Where's Hector Garzo? Has he managed to avoid the gravel trap as well? I'm not sure if he has. Oh, he did. He did ever so well, did Hector Garzo. He just went around the long lap penalty route. But meanwhile, opportunity for Alessandro Zaccone to hit the front. The pair of them did ever so well to stay on. Huge moments into turn six. Yeah, I'm not sure how... Garzo managed to stay on there, but credit to him. And now Zaccone has got a healthy advantage. And Thule, is he still third? I think he's dropped behind Monteiro in fourth at least. I think Thule's still there at the moment. He's managed to waddle his way through the gravel trap and rejoin in third place. We'll see as they come across the line. But meanwhile, it'll be interesting to see just how much of an advantage Zaccone has got now. They'll come down the start finish straight to make it nine laps to go here in Estoril. And it's going to be Alessandro Zaccone that leads by two seconds. 1.8 to be precise. Yeah, Tuli's dropped to fifth, Jack, behind Pons and Montea. Unsurprising. Nine seconds off the uh, off the lead now, Tuli, unfortunately for him. But he's still in with a shout at the podium. There he is, the number 18, Finn. How on earth did he stay on it? Let's see it. Oh, oh Hector oh. Garzo. I think he hit a puddle. Do you know what? I think I saw a splash of water come yeah. up. He's so far out on the on the curb there. He's hit a puddle, and that's kicked some water back up onto the track, which then Nicky Tooley has hit. So I'm not sure how Zaccone got away with that one, but how on earth did Hector Garzo stay on that? He's on slick tyres, and he's just ridden through a puddle. <laughs> Your guess is because mine is yeah, how has he stayed on that? I'm not sure, but one thing for sure, he will be staying away from the curbs now after that. We just see someone dropping down the times there. I'm not sure who that was. Brilliant from Garzo to Absolutely. somehow stay on it. Absolutely. It's, it's 2.3 seconds in arrears now of Zaccone in the battle for the lead, but anything he's able to pick up following that save is fantastic. And somehow. He didn't go into the gravel trap as well. No, he's doing well. The camera panned to Thule, didn't it? Because he made a mistake behind, like we saw. And we weren't sure what happened to Garzo, but he must have picked it up before the gravel. There's a little bit of runoff of tarmac before you hit the gravel. So, yeah, wow. Big moment in this race that now means Zaccone has a 2.2 second lead and he's quickest in sector three as well. So he's still pushing. So that was the gap across the line last time around. As he went through sector two, it has increased to 2.3 seconds. Ooh, we'll see again. as they come across the line now just how much it has increased by. So that's Zaccone across the line, completing lap number 10. And there goes Garzo, 3.1 seconds in arrears now. So the gap is only going in one direction. Zaccone is starting to ease out a pretty comfortable advantage over the Spaniard in second. He is indeed, and Pons looks like he's got the better of Monteo on that lap. Monteo, did he make a mistake? We're not sure. But yeah, Pons now into third behind Hector Garzo and Zucconi, but he's, he's seven, seven, ten, seven seconds off the lead, sorry, and 4.3 off Garzo, so who knows? Maybe that tyre tire issues could come into play, but we'll see, yeah. Montea definitely made a mistake on that last lap. Yeah, he must two, have done. two seconds slower than what his normal race pace has been, and that's allowed Pons to retake that final podium place at the moment. That's the man we're talking about, the number 55 of Yari Montea should have won the first race of the day. He was comfortable out front with three laps to go before crashing out and throwing it all away. Nicky Tooley rejoined from the gravel trap to get back into the podium hunt here. And he's pushing hard as well. He was quite a bit quicker than Montea last time around. 
the gap was about a second up to the rear of the number 55, but that's down to absolutely nothing now, and Tooley's going to make his move. Yeah, the back marker, that's all very good from the number 29 rider as Tooley locks horns with Montea in the battle for fourth. Tooley can see that illustrious podium in his sights in the form of Edgar Pons, but he needs to make his way past Monte as soon as possible. Can he do it down the straight into turn one? Let's find out. Well, this is the battle we saw in race one in quite different conditions in the pouring rain earlier on today. The rain has subsided, and as a result, the action is pretty good as a result, but it's a complete change around with Zaccone and Garzo, two men that didn't feature at all in the first race, now out front. Incidentally, Zaccone, the race leader, has just adding more and more to his advantage over Garza. Now 4.7 seconds. Yeah, Zaccone looks like this is his to lose at the moment, but let's not put a commentator's curse on him just yet. Looks behind him again, see, see there's no one there. 4.7 seconds, the gap with Pons 2.9 behind Garzo. So it looks like Garzo's got second covered, but we'll see. I'm not sure In why fact, I'm saying that, but 143.2 compared to a 144.4 for Pons and Garzo means Pons is closing him in, so I'll eat my words. Here comes the Kony. He's just got Takeshi Ishizuka, one of the backmarkers, to deal with. Riding well, though, is Zaccone at the moment. He's had a couple of years in World Super Sport in 2016 and 2017. Made the switch across to Moto2 last year, and it was a, a changeable year, up and down, to say the least. Tenth overall in the championship in the end. A best result of fourth at the last round of the year, which will give you an indication it's taken him a full season to really become accustomed with this Moto2 bike, given the fact that how well he's going here at the moment. Yeah, he's looking super strong in this second race in Estoril. Let's see if he's eat this, eat this gap out a little bit more. I assume he has. Wait for Garzo to come over the line. 4.8 at the minute, but Zaccone is well on his way to his first victory with six laps to go. The gap 4.6, so staying a little bit of a constant for the time being. Garzo slightly quicker on that lap, but only two tenths, and that's not going to be enough to catch Zaccone as he comes into turn three. He's looking comfortable at the moment, is the 20-year-old Italian. He's just going to flick it left now as we go into the VIP turn, turn number four. I'm sure he'll just be watching his pit board and trying to keep that gap to 4.7 seconds it is now. As long as he can keep it above four seconds, he'll be fairly comfortable. The thing that surprised me that you noticed a couple of laps ago is why he had such a big long look over his shoulder. Yeah, when I think you, you think he's done that a couple of times. Yeah, when you lead in the race and you can use your pit board, just get your head down and keep going. It proves Absolutely. that there's possibly some nerves sneaking in there that even with still six laps to go and when he comes across the line and sees 4.7 on his board, he still wants to have a look to see exactly how big of a distance it looks like. Yeah, he's just got to keep his head down. I mean, they're not perfect conditions, so a little lapse of concentration as we saw with Garzo with his slip into, into turn six, the same with Thule. A little, little lapse of concentration can cost you the race, so yeah, he's just got to keep his head down, but he's doing that well at the minute as he comes round to complete what lap we're on. Lap eight. Yeah, lap 12 we're lap 12, on now. Sorry, we're just yeah, about sorry. to uh, complete lap 13, which would make it five laps to go here in Estoril. Comes across the line, does the Calix rider. Has a big look over to his right-hand side to see his pit boards, which he'll be pleased to see that the gap does stay constant. He's lost a tenth of a second, but he won't be too bothered about that. Four and a half seconds clear. Meanwhile, in the battle for third place, this is where it's going to get interesting because the fastest man on track is Nicky Tooley, a 142.578, the fastest lap we've seen in this race so far. And as a result of that, he's closing in on Egg de Pons. Certainly is half a second quicker than the rider in front of him there, Nicky Tooley, as he eyes his second podium of the day, the Finnish rider making up for lost time that he lost at turn six a few laps ago with five laps to go. Like you say, this could get really interesting for the final podium position. That carrot is dangling in front of him and it is closing in lap by lap, corner by corner for Nicky Tooley. Pon Pons responded though, 20.9, the fastest first sector of anyone in this race, but Tooley just a tenth off. As I say that, Tooley 24.8 compared to 25.1 in sector two, so 
swapping and changing fastest sectors of the Spaniard and the Finnish rider. And are they just falling? Is Hector Garzo, sorry, the man in second place, possibly going to fall into the clutches of Pons and Tula here as those two rage on in terms of a pace which is far superior to Garzo in second, or a half second quicker last time around. I think with five laps to go, Garzo might just be in trouble here. Yeah, it could be that tyre tire management thing that we said earlier, Jack. I think it'll be interesting to see what these times are. Tuli on another fast one, 23.9, the fastest sector three that we've seen this race so far. So, yeah, Tuli really is on a mission to get that podium spot. Let's see what the gap is to Garzo. Oh, he looked it there, did Hector Garzo as well. Edgar Pons hanging off that Calex Moto 2 machine as they went through the final corner. Yeah, That's Garzo really slipping into the cl clutches of Pons and Tuli. 43.5 for Garzo compared to 42.6 for Pons and Tuli with another fastest lap of the race, a 142.2. Wow, a second a lap quicker than the men in front of them for both Pons and Tuli. Tuli now within two tenths of a second of setting a new lap record and the fastest ever lap we've seen on a Moto2 machine here in Portugal. Meanwhile, out front, Alessandro Zaccone is still pretty comfortable. You see him just whish through your TV screen there in first place. But that's the man we need to be focusing on, Hector Gazzo, because he's in a bit of trouble here. Three and a half laps remaining. And Edgar Pons has made a mistake because Tool is up into third place now. So the Finn is looking for back-to-back -back podiums here in Estoril. I'm not sure where it's happened, but he was at least three or four bike lengths back off egg to Pons, but suddenly that's reversed and Tool is up into third. I think Pons ran slightly wide at turn three, but he did have the lead coming out of turn three, so it looks like it was turn four that he made another mistake. And yeah, like you say, Tuli is through into third and another sector one fastest lap of the race for Tuli as they hunt down Hector Garzo in second. As they go through Gancho now. Quick chicane of left and then right and then into the S's. Tuli does look super strong through here. This is your final sector, sector four, and the past few laps, tuli has been the strongest man by far through here. I think there's a bit of a response coming from Garzo, though. He looks like he's just managed to hold on to that two-second advantage that we saw from last time around. They come across the line now. Let's see what lap times we're seeing from the front guys. And, yeah, there is... Oh, no, there's no response whatsoever. <laughs> I was going to say Garzo goes slightly quicker <laughs> with a 143.3, but Tuli behind him is 0.9 of a second quicker. With three laps to go, the gap is 1.3 seconds. It's a matter of when, not if, Tuli catches and probably passes Garzo. Yeah, Pons even slower than Garzo there, so definitely a mistake on that lap for the Spaniard. But yeah, like you say, 1.1 now, the gap between second and third. Is Tuli going to do it with three laps to go? Meanwhile, we look at the race leader, Zaccone. Five seconds clear now. What a ride this is coming in from Alessandro Zaccone. Never stood on a European Moto2 podium before. He's now just two and a half laps away from standing, never mind on the podium, but on the top step. But this battle for the final podium places is where it's all going to come down to in the closing stages because Garzo is just slipping backwards into the clutches of Nicky Tooley. We can move our eyes away from the timing screens to the right purely on the TV pictures because they are in the same shot now. Garzo has got a back marker in front of him to try contend with. Yeah, let's hope he gets out of the way and let's let this battle for third rage on. Pond's third sector, 23.9 compared to 24.0 and 24.2 for the rise in front of him. So, yeah, we're soon to have a three-way battle for second on our hands with two laps to go as Zucconi crosses the line. Back markers out of the way, and it's now down to just these two. Tuli closing in, closing in, closing in. Surely this is where he makes his move to take Ooh. second place. A big wobble as he comes out the final corner. Well, that cost him the run down the start, finish straight. Two laps remaining, and there goes Nicky Tuli up into second place. What can Hector Garzao do to respond? He's going to have to come up with some sort of response because he's now got to deal with Edgar Pons all over the rear wheel of him. Yeah, classic history of motor. Oh, over a puddle there Tuli as they go through the turn one. I think that was the front three all going over that puddle there. Big splash as they go through. Yeah, again, showing that the conditions really are far from perfect for these Moto2 riders, but it's Tuli looking strong for his second consecutive podium of the season. Rinner, Rinner, winner of race one. But Garza and Pons are right there with him. He's not eking out a gap just yet as 
We're closing on another back marker. Let's hope he gets out of the way. Through turn five into turn six, and Thule just starting to break clear now. Garzo trying his best, though, late on the brakes as a Spaniard. Is he going to run ever so slightly wide? Oh, I think he is just. He's just going to hold on, though, to clip the apex on the run out of turn six, though. Now into turn seven and eight before we then move towards Gansho, the chicane. And again, Hector Garzo is looking pretty wild. I think he's on the ragged edge here. Let's hope the blue flags have been seen by the back marker. Oh, no, he's on the racing line. Get out of the way. Tule had to be brave there. He just dives past the back marker. And he's come up trumps with that as a result. That is the three or four bike lengths he will have been praying for before he starts the final lap. Garzo still in contention, though. But I think he's going to have to be more worried about holding on to third place, never mind taking seconds, because Edgar Pons is looking for another podium himself all over the rear wheel of Hector Garzo. Meanwhile, this man starts the final lap, Alessandro Zaccone. He's just got one more lap of Estoril to do, and he'll stand on the top step of the podium for the first time in his career in the Moto2 class. He absolutely will, but the battle rage is on behind as another back marker gets in the way. He's just slowed up as a Kone, but I think he's possibly just easing his way towards the chequered flag. 3.2 yeah. seconds was his gap over the line. Meanwhile, this is the battle for the final podium places, and Edgar Pons is in front of Garzo. He must have done it down the start, finish straight, and into turn one. So Garzo having hold on to a podium place for all 18 of the laps we've seen so far, suddenly on the last, has been slipped back to fourth place. Yeah, we didn't quite, quite catch that on the screens, but still Tuli holding that second, and Pons now third over Garzo. Can he dive at the inside in turn six. I don't think he's going to be close enough unless he's really late on the brakes. No, it doesn't look like it. Thule backing it in on his way to a second at the moment with Pons third. All three of them backing it in there as we focus on the race leader, Zaccone. He's just got half a lap to go. The back marker gets out of the way nicely for him. Meanwhile, in the battle for second and third, Pons, is he closing in on Nicky Thule? He's not got many opportunities left as he flick through turn eight. They're going to go into Gancho here. He's surely too far back to dive under the inside. Yes, he is. So where else is he going to make an other move here? Surely he's just going to have to try and drag his way through Ooh, God, towards the, the start-finish well, line. On. Yeah, it's going to have to be a last corner move from Edgar Pons on Nicotula. But here he comes, Alessandro Zaccone, round the final corner to Let's take his first European Moto2 Championship win. What a ride from the Italian. Brilliant from the 20-year-old. We have a look over his shoulder, though. Who's going to take second place? Sacconi wheelies his way over the line, but Nicky Tooley just holds on to second place. Edgar Pons pushing him all the way. Just 40, one hundredths of a second behind the fin, but Edgar Pons will have to settle for third place. Nicky Tooley will remain as the championship leader. A win this morning, second this afternoon. A good day's work overall for the fin. But all of the plaudits have to go the way of that man. For the first time, Alessandro Zaccone has won a European Moto2 race. And what a ride it was from the Italian. Overcome with emotion is the 20-year-old. I think you could possibly say slightly pleased with that one. And although it's no consolation to Yari Montea, who should have won the first race, finally we get to hear the Italian national anthem here in Estoril. I think he'll be pretty pleased with his day's work, Nicky Tuli. Goes on to Valencia in a three weeks' time as the Moto2 Championship leader. And Edgar Pons stays in contention as well. Second in race one, third in race two. I'm sure he'll be bitterly disappointed not to win, but when you compare it to how we got on here in Estoril in 2018, a big crash in the first race, meaning he couldn't even participate in race number two. He's 36 points better off than he was in 2018. So a good start to the championship. For him, a double podium. Hector Garzo, number four, having finished fourth as well. Bitter disappointment for him. If only he wouldn't have made that mistake into Parabolica Interior where he just touched that puddle on the way in, got it all wrong. Oh, nice little dance from the marshal there as well. His day's work nearly coming to an end. We've got the European Talent Cup Series 2 race to round things out. And it's Alessandro Zaccone, just 20 years of age and rode with such maturity there.
he's still not managed to come to terms with the fact that he's won the race. How often has he slapped the tank? There's probably going to be a dent on that number 61 Calyx machine. He's been slapping the tank that hard on his way round. We see the results are on the bottom of your screen there. Nicky Tooley in second, Edgar Pons third, Hector Garzo fourth. Some of the riders we didn't mention, or manage to mention with the battle as hot as it was. Montea and then Marcon. Ramdan Rosley, third in race one, seventh for good day's work for him. Then got Benny Solis, Kazmiadin and Salim. Magel's there in 12th, Samoon, Brenner and Noridin, the final point scorer in 15th. And a mention as well for Sam Wilford, the British wild card. Just getting some miles under his belt here in Estoril before he gives the British Super Sport Championship a challenge in a week's time at Silverstone. Well, there he is, Alessandro Zaccone. Let's see if we can have a look inside that helmet because I think he's going to be a rather pleased young Italian. He can possibly add his name to a long list of men to have come through Rimini, Italy. Marco Bezzecchi, Stefano Manzi, Enea Bastianini, just to add a few, having come from that small coastal town in Italy. Well, now you can add Alessandro Zaccone as another super talented Italian. Alessandro Zetti, he was the top Super Stock 600 man in the end in 23rd place. So it's double Italian delight on the podium here in Portimao. Look at the hugs continuing down in the bottom for Zaccone. Great ride from him. He's just getting whisked off. We're going to hear from him very shortly. Before that, there's Nicky Tooley. Second place again. Not the beaming smile that we saw from him three hours ago, but a championship lead. Must have taken that before he got his days at work started. He'll be part of the Moto E Championship once that gets underway in Le Mans, as will Hector Garzo, a man that we gave a good mention as well. Hector Garzo, a part of the Tech 2 Moto E squad. Edgar Pons there, another podium finish for him. Shaking ahead, he's not too pleased, but second in the championship. Has to be pleased with that before heading on to Valencia. Right, let's head down to Park Ferme. Hopefully we'll be able to hear from your race winner, Alessandro Zaccone, alongside Elliot York. Well, we will do very shortly. Clearly the Italian still getting ambushed by the vast majority of his team. Plenty of hugs going on. They might not have released him yet but he'll move quite considerably up the championship as a result of that right let's head down let's hear from him Alessandro Zaccone your race two winner in the Moto2 class Alessandro what a ride what a victory how are you feeling after that one I don't know it's amazing I can I can say this uh, this feeling I, I want just to say thanks to, to everybody to my sponsor to my family to my manager to to everybody to my team for be here uh, it's an amazing feeling. I, I think that we have started the season in the best way. And in Italian. Eh, abbiamo fatto, non lo so descrivere questa emozione, è stato fantastico, ho fatto tutto l'ultimo giro piangendo. L'unica cosa che posso dire è grazie a tutte le persone che mi hanno voluto qui, ai miei sponsor, al mio manager, alla mia famiglia soprattutto. Eh, voglio dire una cosa al mio papà, ce l'abbiamo fatta. Grazie. Alessandro Zaccone picking up race number two victory in the European Moto2 Championship. And this is how it happens. Super race from start to finish. The first one we've had all day in dry conditions and it certainly didn't disappoint. From the get-go, Nicky Tooley wanted to break the pack almost immediately. It was three seconds up the road after no more than two slaps. But slowly but surely there, that man again, Alessandro Zaccone picked his way through. He also eventually had Hector Garzo, the number four there, in pursuit with him as well. Zaccone made his way through up to second and then set his sights on Nicky Tooley ahead of him. Hector Garzo there, the number four in company with the Italian as well. Meanwhile, Yari Montea kept on battling away, aiming for a podium finish. A couple of mistakes from Zaccone allowed Garzo to have his opportunity. 
Disaster for the number 77 of Mikel Ponzo. He was up inside the top six before a technical problem put an end to that. And then finally, it all came together in that six wheeler between the three top riders, Zaconi and Garzo had slowly but surely managed to close in Nicky Tooley at the front of the race. Started battling Zaconi, having a good look over to his right hand side to see the number four of Garzo. Tooley stayed in touching distance in third before this was the moment that settled it. Hector Garzo running over a puddle, splashing some water into the path of Nicky Tooley and the pair of them both having to run on. It allowed Zaconi to escape, which he Julie did. Big look over his shoulder. Yes, Alessandro, you do have that much room. But the battle behind for the podium places was contested between Nicky Tooley and Hector Garzo, both of them managing to put some sort of a fight back together after that mistake. Edgar Pons got involved as well as he aimed for two podiums from his day's work. But all the talk is about that man. Not the best of wheelies across the line, but I don't think he cares less. The first ever win in the European Moto2 class for Alessandro Zaccone. And I think you could possibly say he was quite pleased with it. So here's your final results from the European Moto2 race. 11 race championship. We've now completed two of them. Zaccone on top, followed by Tuli and Edgar Pons. Look how close they were across the line. Then Hector Gazzo, Yari Montea in fifth. Tommaso Marcon in sixth. Ramdan Rosli. And who else do we have there? Daniel Kazmiadin and Benny Solis in eighth and ninth. Jerry Salim was tenth. Matteo Ferrari, Matthias Megel, and a Pab Samoon. Marcel Brenner, Adam Norrid in the final point, followed by Sam Wilford, Alex Ruiz, and Cedric Tangre on the Mistral. From 19th down with Kevin Kubo and the VR46 Master Camp bike was there. Rounding out the top 20, Danny Valle, followed by the Australian Chandler Cooper with Maya Vetti. Cipriati, Pavaline and Diaz and August all a lap in arrears, as were Ishizuka and Lee Van Luchel with August and Mikel Pons, the only two not able to see the chequered flag. So here they come out onto the podium. Still a beaming smile on the face of Alessandro Zaccone. I think that's going to be the case at least for the next few hours and possibly into tomorrow morning as well. As the awards are handed out, first to the team owner of Promo Racing, Calex. And then the Super Stock 600 victory going the way of Alessano Zetti. And then your Moto2 podium finishes. First, another podium, two out of two for Edgar Pons. Second place going the way of the now championship leader. 25 points this morning, 20 points this afternoon. Super day's work for the Finn, Nicky Tooley. But the race winner's trophy for the first time in his career going to the 20 year old Italian Alessandro Zaccone. Eventually taking a checkered flag, 1.3 seconds clear, but it was far more dominant than that. 500 euros worth of fuel as well for the Italian. And for the first time today, the Italian national anthem will ring round Portimao. The Italian national anthem for Alessandro Zaccone. 
And now he waits. Can he spray the champagne yet? Did he want the photos first? I think they're going to have the photos first. It gives an opportunity for the team manager. Well, he wants to get involved as well. I'm surprised he's not exited stage left, knowing that there's going to be some champagne possibly been sprayed in his direction. I think we'll see a rapid change. Yeah, here he goes. There he is. Off he goes. He's not, off. He's not he hanging about at all, is he? He knows what's coming. And there we go. The champagne been sprayed. Alessandro de Sigoni, the first time in his career, getting the opportunity to get busy with the fizzy. Plenty more of that tonight, I reckon, on the cards for the Italian, and rightly so after an incredible race. Sure, there will be. So here are the championship standings as we head into Valencia in three weeks' time in the European Moto2 Championship. And it's Nicky Tuli who fronts the way. Nine points clear of Alessandro Zaccone, level with Edgar Pons. Ramdan Rosley's there in fourth. Tommaso Marcon in fifth. Matthias Miguel, Matteo Ferrari, Hector Garzo after crashing out of race one is there in eighth. As is Mikel Pons, the pair of them picking up fourth place finishes but unable to add to that in either race one or race two. Yari Montia, well, what could have been for him? Fifth place in race number two, but should have been an extra 25 points attached to his name after crashing out of the lead of race one. Adam Noradin, his debut on the Moto2 there in 11th place, with Jerry Salim, the junior talent team rider, in 14th with six points. All the way down to the bottom of the standings with Sam Wilford, who is the wild card entrant for this weekend before he heads towards the British Supersport Championship. So it's a goodbye from us here in Estoril. We're back out on the 28th of April at Valencia for Moto3, Moto2 and European Talent Cup action. Thank you for your company this afternoon.